and thank you for staying with us. According to the CDC, more than 50 million Americans suffer from chronic pain. And although there's no a cure for chronic pain, the condition can be managed successfully. It's important to stick to your pain management plan to help relieve symptoms. And the question is, what dietary and lifestyle changes can you have in helping you to reduce chronic pain? Well, joining us to share more is the owner of Washington Heights Wellness, Dr. Rosanna De La Cruz. And we thank you so much for joining us, uh, Dr. De La Cruz. Thank you for having us, Jamie. Thank you. It's an honor. Oh, good to be here. Good to have you with us. So when we talk about chronic pain, obviously it is something that a lot of people suffer with. Um, and I guess the question is navigating and dealing with it. But from your estimation, uh, as we said, about 50 million Americans uh, suffer from chronic pain. How do you handle it? Well, here at Washington Heights Wellness, we treat lots of people with chronic pain. And, you know, we start to look at the root cause of the problem because um, a lot of times we start to feel pain way later after it's been accumulating. What's always present when we are talking about chronic pain is inflammation. Um, inflammation could be uh, looking like swelling in the specific area. It could be red. It could also be uh, pain. So even if there is no pain at the moment, even if you are experiencing any of those symptoms, uh, you know that there is uh, chronic pain in the process that is, is going to, to show up um, any moment. So uh, I would say the best way to approach inflammation, uh, which by the way, inflammation is a good thing. Inflammation, we hear a lot when uh, we go to our doctor, oh, you have too much inflammation. If you have chronic pain, that's probably a, a, a word that you hear everywhere in every doctor or doctor's office you go to. So inflammation is the first line of defense for the body because it's a way of the body defending itself, uh, kind of sending us red signals, letting us know where things are going wrong. So the problem starts when we have chronic inflammation, where the body is constantly fighting and sending us those red signals. Um, a great way to start taking care of ourselves and uh, reduce the chronic inflammation is by uh, definitely, like you say, Jamie, uh, making sure that we are having some dietary changes along with some uh, lifestyle changes. Uh, some of the dietary changes that we can start putting in place is reducing uh, dairy. So it's been proven, you know, a lot of times we go, oh, I just take the 2% or I just do the lactose free, when in fact it's not the lactose or the fat that causes inflammation. There is an enzyme called casein, which is very difficult for the body to, uh, to metabolize or digest. Therefore, it is important to start reducing the amount of dairy so we can stop uh, having uh, chronic inflammation and therefore alleviate uh, pain, specifically chronic pain. Can I jump in and talk about this right here? Well, you said reduce dairy, right? So we talk about yes. reducing, reducing it. What would be an optimal amount for people to say, because, you know, some people say, well, you know, I'm reducing, but that might not be exactly what's necessary. Uh, that's right. I just, I always say that the exception is not the rule when it comes to our health. Uh, what that means is it really depends on how much they were intaking. For example, a day we'll probably have a sandwich where there is cheese and uh, sometimes they put two types of cheese. I, I often tell my patients to try to, uh, to change the cheese for avocado, which I know is not even close to it, but no, uh, it's no. a much better choice. <laughs> yes, I love cheese too. I love manchego cheese. It's one of my favorite cheeses, but um, I don't have any chronic pain. Uh, so I, I, I indulge probably more often than I should. But uh, going back to your question, so it really depends how much dairy we are intaking. So um, once a week, uh, some um, small amount of cheese is, is not our whole uh, health. But if we have today, for example, we have the cereal with milk, and then later we have a sandwich with uh, cheese, and then we come back home again, we have some dairy. Uh, definitely it's a pro-inflammatory food which we should reduce to a minimum so if you uh, you know whatever you're doing reduce it to 95 percent meaning by that five percent of the time uh, during the week uh, again you know it doesn't mean that you'll never have dairy again or that you always have to be at five percent of uh, dairy intake what it means is that while you're going through this chronic pain 
um, or chronic inflammation, it is important to start reducing the pro-inflammatory foods, which also uh, processed foods usually are pro-inflammatory because they take a lot more chemicals to be able to keep them on the shelves longer. Um, so I always go back to unprocessed foods, but if we, if we eliminate two major culprits of inflammation, which is uh, flour, which is a processed food that includes bread uh, and milk. We are already reducing almost uh, all processed foods because those two items are almost in every processed food. So those are my two, the, the first two type of foods that I suggest my patients to stop taking, eating uh, when we start treating chronic pain. Mm -hmm. And then I also know that when you talk about procedures for chronic pain, right, uh, the way things have changed medically, have I, we've seen certain advancements. Uh, I know that there's strategies um, in integrative medicine now that's designed to helping uh, and assisting people who actually go through this. Yes, absolutely. Uh, here at Washington Heights Wellness, we incorporate many, many modalities including acupuncture, which has been proven to be safe and effective. And um, people that have been in pain for um, lots of time and many, many years, are not, we've, we've helped thousands of people eliminate their pain and go back to their quality of life that they expect from themselves, including you know, going back to work, being more productive, um, being able to enjoy their time with their family, uh, going to sleep and have a full night's sleep without feeling pain. Those are very uh, big problems that can cause uh, poor quality of life for us when we have chronic pain. So there are many, many options. I always like to use the integrative medicine. Uh, also, I always encourage my patients to give them, uh, the, themselves a chance uh, to, to allow their body to heal, which it happens is happening for all of us right now. The body heals itself. Uh, and the natural state of our body is healthy. 95% of the people that have uh, in this planet, on this planet, is, uh, are born completely healthy. So most of the stuff that we get along the way, um, of course, there is trauma like accidents and falls, but uh, they are definitely rooted in dietary um, and, and lifestyle um, corrections. So if we adjust that, uh, we can definitely eliminate pain along with other modalities. Uh, that many experts uh, can help um, are, are, I mean, there are many people that dedicate their lives to help people eliminate pain, and I, I am one of them. We hear a lot about electronic stimulation. How effective is electronic stimulation when dealing with chronic pain? Yes, we use it here. Uh, we, we call it e-stim or micro-stimulation. Mm -hmm. uh, we already have this happening in our body. That's the way we digest foods. That's the way that we heal wounds. That's the way that all organs regenerate themselves. So there are specific frequencies that uh, some machines have. There are some machines that are better than others because they have a uh, different type of frequencies. And uh, these frequencies we attach, in this case, we attach it to the acupuncture site uh, with, with a very, very tiny and completely painless needle. Um, and um, that allows the blood to flow, to move inflammation, and in some cases, even swelling in an area uh, where there is chronic pain. And this microstimulation helps a lot because a lot of times when we are in chronic pain, it's because there's something stuck there, whether it's blood or fluids or um, excess of the same fluids that are caused by inflammation. So as we start to unblock that area, then uh, the blood flow will also help with uh, the inflammation and the pain. So every time we have pain, there is poor blood circulation to those areas along with inflammation. We know that sometimes when people deal with chronic pain, one of the greatest things that they do is they get back to this thing called idleness. They don't do much, you know. I'm in too much pain, I don't wanna do much. But we know that sometimes just sitting in pain is really the worst thing that you can possibly do. Absolutely, and uh, I always tell my patients uh, that uh, it's not okay to feel pain. And sometimes we kind of get used to it. And the same way a lot of my patients, when they, don't st when they start eliminating the, their pain, What's the pain level this week? You say, you know what? I haven't even have any pain this week. That's awesome. Now we can continue to stabilize and transition that patient into going back to the regular activities and sports in some cases. So yes, it is not okay to sit with pain. 
And I actually, when we are dealing with pain, we are also uh, affecting our mental, emotional state. Many people uh, start having other underlying uh, disorders, including hypertension. It's been proven that when people have uh, very high levels of pain, uh, they can also have develop high blood pressure. So it is not okay to sit in pain. There are options and it is possible for, for a person to go from a 10 out of 10 uh, pain level to zero and uh, go back to their high quality of life. Well, before we leave, please tell people where they can find you in case they want to get some more help. Absolutely. We are here at Washington Heights Wellness, New York City. Uh, that's the name of the community, Washington Heights. We help many people from the Bronx as well. We're approximately half a mile away from the Bronx. And we offer a free consultation here. I always like to tell my patients, uh, I, I like to see them to see, make sure that I can help them. And also tell them if I can't, I can refer someone else. Uh, in some cases, we've had to get some other tests to make sure that there are no other underlying conditions. But um, we're here at WashingtonHeightsWellness.com and we start with a free consultation that um, we're more than happy to extend to our patients so we can start eliminating chronic pain and other chronic conditions. All righty. Well, Dr. Rosanna De La Cruz, we got to leave it there. Thank you so much for being Thank with you. us here. Thank you, Jamie. It's always an honor. Thank all righty. You. Listen, for more information now, all you got to do is visit their website, acupuncturelocal.com. Stay tuned. We've got more show coming up right after this.